Welcome to the Wildcast Podcast, coming to you from Wildcast Studios with your hosts, Adam Lund and Jeremy Boucher. Oh, welcome in and welcome back to Wildcast Studios on Rogers TV for another episode of the Wildcast Podcast, your unofficial voice for all things Moncton Wildcast, presented by Alpha's Appliance Solutions, the premier destination for appliance and storage solutions in Moncton. Right now, they got the KitchenAid Cook Up the Savings event. Save 300 on any three KitchenAid Whirlpool or Maytag appliances. Save 400 on any four or 500 on any five. Must be purchased before Halloween, basically. Uh, as always, finishers, I am your host, Adam Lund, and I am joined by your favorite co hoster, Mr. YQM, Mr. Winning Things on the Radio, potentially, Mr. Jeremy Boucher. Let's tell the fans about your morning. Yeah, so the morning, or Monday morning, I guess it would be. Well, I was actually going to save that for later in the show. Oh, okay. If that's uh, if that's okay, that's fine. Potentially... How's your week been? <laughs> yeah, the week's been, it's the week's been good. Uh, you know, we are back at the rink, which is always uh, always nice. Uh, the mother in law was uh, down from Ontario last oh, week. Oh, you got to have mother in law stories now. Yeah, yeah there, there was a few, but honestly, she was. Uh, I worked all the time. Megan worked all the time, uh, and she just relaxed. And she said it was mm-hmm. the best vacation ever. What? Because there was no schedule to follow, no itinerary, no nothing. Uh, so she was just able to do her own thing while I worked and Megan worked and Avery went to school. And she went back uh, She went back on Sunday feeling relaxed and ready to conquer the world again, as as, uh, <laughs> as I like to say. It was a nice, nice little visit with the mother-in-law. Yeah. And that was her first time visiting... Moncton or New Brunswick since uh, since the wedding, which was seven and a half years ago. So really, yeah, she uh, she was. I was looking forward to taking her, showing her around a little more, but she was quite content with just sitting at her place and Relaxing. chilling out. So that was my week. That's that's pretty. Did you at least get like home cooked meals? And by home cooked meals, I mean oh, she yeah. was cooking yeah. home cooked meal. Or I guess mm. did Megan get home cooked meals? Is what I mean. Yeah. No, we had some. We were eating good. We had chili one night. We had. Uh, oh, what else did she make us? There was just leftovers for days. Yeah. Uh, I was eating leftovers for lunch. You know, she made chili. We ordered it. We ordered in a lot. Had some Chinese food and and all that other good stuff. And uh, I went to Halifax on Saturday just for the day, and that was pretty much it. There was uh, I know there's other there's another meal in there that I just cannot remember right now, but uh the chili was uh was was remem- memorable. <laughs> did she uh did she get you started on Thanksgiving stuff? Did she get some of the stuff going yeah. coming up this week or you guys got that taken care of? Oh, I will we'll go to my parents for that. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, well uh that's that's all. So you guys didn't have a Thanksgiving early Thanksgiving nope. dinner with their parent with No. Their mom right no, that's uh I couldn't handle two two turkeys. Mm-hmm. That's uh, one one turkey every a year. Well, <laughs> twice a year. Twice a year is, yeah. is good enough for me. Yeah, we're uh, we're trying to figure out when we're going to record this. A because there's hockey games Saturday and Monday, and we got to keep him awake while doing this recording. If it's after turkey, is the trip if the fan hits you and and uh, and knocks you out. But um, yeah, no, it was. I said it a couple weeks ago. I love this time of year. Like I just like to drive around and literally stare at leaves. And I didn't think I'd get to that age where I just like to look at leaves and it's six years in and it's just still beautiful to me. Yeah. Even the drive to Halifax, once they get into the, the comic Good pass area yeah. there, uh, super, super beautiful drive right now. And that was probably my favorite, um, favorite part of it. And Megan's like, I like going for drives in the fall because the leaves are so colorful and, what was she doing the entire drive playing a game on her phone, <laughs> not even enjoying the scenery. And I kept yeah, calling. See, I have to it. drive if I want to see the leaves. Cause yeah. if I don't, as you're fans, sleeping. Yeah. As fans know, watching our videos. Yeah. yeah. Out like a light. Yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll fall asleep from the moment you pull up the driveway and you'll wake <laughs> up when we arrive at the destination. Yeah, no, that's actually not even at the destination. Stopping for gas out like a light. Yeah. And it's just always been that way. I always slept in the back of the car mm-hmm. and always got, or always woke up about 10 minutes outside of Hannah at a certain little farmhouse, just for whatever reason, that's when I would wake up and that's when I would know how far away we were. Ridiculous. Yeah. I remember when we went to dra- the draft in Quebec, you were, you slept the entire way. We stopped in Woodstock to go to the bathroom. We went into Tim Hortons. We were stopped for a good 20 minutes and 
came out and you were still passed out the vaccine. <laughs> yeah. Didn't, yeah, didn't uh, didn't move, and that's what we did. Uh, uh, one of the trips coming back from Ontario two years ago in the afternoon too. We left early in the morning, and she drove until a certain time when I woke up, and away we went. I could not do that. I'm always the driver. Yeah, rock me gently, like uh, Hootie says. Rock me, mama, like a wagon. <laughs> there it is. Um, Hell's Kitchen, man. We uh, I said last week it's gonna be full of drama. <laughs> Did Amber throw her under the bus as fast as she yeah, could? Like, yeah, yeah, that's a good, she, uh, that's a good start. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, like, and I think my, I don't think Egypt's gonna be there long. You don't think so? I think cooking wise, I think he will be, but, yeah, but personality the, wise, the, I think the he's mouth on be, him. Yeah, I think he's gonna get annoying, and they're gonna, they're gonna any any small little misstep, and he's gonna be. Yeah, but I guess if, if Ramsey sees it the other way, I mean, yeah. Ramsey's the one with the final decision, right? Yeah. He'll keep him around if he thinks he's a vocal and he's a leader and he can cook. You know, he's not going to believe anything those guys say. No, right? Yeah. If anything, he'll be like, "Egypt, give me your jackets." Yeah. And they'd be like, "You're now on the red team." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or he's just like, like he did this week. Whoever it was someone in Michael, get back in line. Yeah. Are you a little worried on Michael? No, no. no. He, he had to. He's shown. In the first two episodes that you know he can cook uh, and he's he's got a voice too so i wasn't too concerned it's, after watching the show for so long you kind of know it's predictable like he, yeah. he, there's no way he's going to send michael home over was it amber amber that uh, went was, home yeah amber went home yeah it was yeah. amber was a yeah not not very not very good from from the get-go <laughs> no and for it's kind of funny like these are head chefs like they run kitchens yeah and it's like the simplest tasks they have trouble with probably because they haven't done them in 10, 15 years. Yeah, it's different menus. Yeah. It's, it's high, it's high end food. It's, it's fine dining. They've probably never cooked a menu like this before. No. So it, there, there's an adjustment period. It's like hockey. Yeah. You know, you're going from, well, maybe you're a, a head chef at, uh, you know, uh, sports rock. Well, you're going from sports rock to nothing with, you know, I love sports rocks. My favorite yeah. restaurant in Moncton. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> but it, you know, if you were to go from a head chef at sports rock to, uh, you know, head chef at uh, the wind jammer yeah. at the Delta Bosa yeah. that's an adjustment period. Yeah, right? exactly. You're not going to crank out a, no. uh, a Chateau Briand with, uh, you know, table side Caesar salad and flambéed, you know, this and that uh on your first day without messing it up somehow so there's uh it, it's you know these these they just gotta adjust you learn the menu uh and fire out some food yeah we had some we had some steaks on uh on sunday or yeah. saturday night because nice. we watched the house kitchen after and she's like i feel like steaks so saturday coming home i stopped at dolma hashtag not a sponsor but go get your meat from dolma foods her really good thing oh, absolutely yeah. steaks were about yay big nice. by about yay thick Two of them, 18 bucks. No way. Way. Wow. Right now. Well, I don't know if it's right now. Again, not a sponsor, but they've got um, their sausage 25% off. Hmm. Yeah. Well, Rogers TV, I can make a joke right now, but uh, <laughs> not going. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a great place. That's where we usually get our uh, all of our meats and nice. all that uh, all that good stuff. Good and know. what's funny, why I laugh when you said sports rock is I just want everyone to know out there. We didn't steal the rug. No, we absolutely not. <laughs> like, no, no, we are I, I, completely innocent. It we was have one of the best, nothing like, to do. I think one of the first comments was, "Why? Why would you steal a rug that says Sports Rock on it? Like it, it's it would be a nice welcome mat. Yeah, it would be a nice addition. You know, not necessarily on the wall here, but as <laughs> yeah. you walk into the studio." Yeah. Yeah, and You're I turned the camera the on, but I got to get up, and I can't yeah. do that. But we did not. Well, steal. We are completely yeah. innocent. Uh, no, move on with your investigation. Yeah, so good. All right, don't forget as always, you can follow us on the social medias: Twitter, Moncton Wildcast, Instagram Wildcast Podcast, TikTok Wildcast Podcast, and of course, as well here on YouTube. Please don't forget to like and smash that subscribe button. It lets you let us know that you like what we're doing as well. We got some post game coverages, and you don't want to miss any of those. Especially, uh, and I was going to say something, but then I completely lost. Wasn't um, important. Nope, wasn't important. Um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Monday. Yeah. Monday will be a good one. Monday will be um, interesting. 
yeah, let's uh, let's get to a quick question. We had a few from our fans put out there on social media. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, so I picked just one. Um, and it was from it was from our friend Ken Che. Oh yeah, big fan of the show. Yeah. Um, Good does dude. the lack of discipline that creeped in last season concern you into this season? Um, and the reason he asked that was the the lotion slew yeah. foot, yeah. which was an automatic suspension. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess just it doesn't. Feel like they're take it kind of feels like they're taking a lot of penalties, but then you look and they've got like three or four a game. Mm-hmm. Um, so does it concern you a little bit? A little. Uh it's not that they're they're taking penalties, it's when they're taking penalties. Yeah. Uh you know, that um the game in Bathurst, it was it was close the entire game and, and they just kept kept taking penalty after penalty after penalty and I mean that's you say it when you, that's playing with fire. Yeah, and it uh, doesn't matter how good of a power play the opposition has. Anytime you're giving them opportunity after opportunity, you're going to get yourself burned eventually. And especially you know the lotion one, it just came at a very pivotal moment in the game. Uh, and you know you're on a you're uh, killing a five minute penalty, and all it takes is is a puck over the glass and all of a sudden it's a five on three for a full two minutes right yeah. like it's there's there's you really got to watch that stuff and uh it wasn't a very smart penalty uh to take and the player who took the penalty knows better and 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 all that so uh, yeah the, the, i guess the timing it's not that any any penalty is bad but the timing of the penalties right now is is when you're is starting to get to be a concern to me yeah, and I think it's the way they're shorthanded is going. Like when you take the penalties, mm-hmm. they're still only at a seventy-five percent clip on the on the penalty kill. I'm just trying to find the numbers here and trying to read it real fast as I scroll. Seventy-six percent, I think, uh, overall. So I think that's the more concerning part is like your power, your penalty kill hasn't been great mm-hmm. when you take those penalties. Um, oh my bad, eighty-eight percent. That was last eighty percent on penalty kill. Penalty kill. That was I last was week. really just going to say anything about 80, 80 85 yeah. is, is a very good penalty kill. So, but you still don't want to be tempting that. Yeah. And I think they're game wise. I think they're at about eight or nine penalties a game. And I mean, I think the more concerning part is when teams give you like special teams has been a factor this year, mm-hmm. both, and it's been early on whether it's power play, penalty kill. Um, it hasn't special teams hasn't been special for us, but. I think the more concerning thing coming out of the game that we're going to talk about in a little bit is they had 11 power play chances and scored two goals. Yeah. Like that's, uh, yeah, we're averaging 10, 10 penalty minutes a game. Yeah. That's, that's probably four penalty minutes too much. Yeah. I mean, if you can do one penalty a period, I think you're, you're pretty good. I mean, Hey, don't take any penalties at all, but it's tough to, it's tough to take no penalties unless your name is Zach O'Brien. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we already went through that. We did go through. Uh, we, didn't, uh, we didn't make a big enough case to get him on the awards, no. but hey, uh, it's right now. It's just the timing of the penalties, and you know they're also getting their power play opportunities, but they're kicking themselves in the butt by giving up shorthanded goals right now, which I think is is. Uh, I don't care about penalties right now, but stop giving up <laughs> shorthanded goals. I'm more yeah. concerned about that than I am the the discipline right now. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks again, Kay, for your, or thanks again, Ken, for your question. And uh, we'll do this later on, uh, probably next month, maybe one more time and see what kind of questions we get. But we always thank everyone for giving us their questions. All right, let's get to some news and notes from around the queue. News and notes from around the queue. All right, you want to start? Uh, so you'd think I'd have this down by now. <laughs> News and notes presented by Integrity Lawn Care. Look, we talked about the leaves falling uh, and how beautiful they look when they change. That also means they're going to be on your lawn, and you're going to want to get that ready for the W word. Gonna want to get that ready for the W word. Uh, check them out on Instagram or give them a call 506 866 8218 or uh, email them at integrity lawn care at hotmail.com. You want to start big news or little news? Uh, let's let's go with the little one first. Just little so one we first? can kind of all right, we'll yeah. go from the bottom all the way to the top. Uh, Vincent Collard was named the QMJHL student athlete of the month. Nerd, <laughs> uh, the 
Uh, a little bit of a shakeup in St. John. Anthony Stella uh, was let go as the general manager. Mm. Trevor Travis Crickard was named general manager to succeed him. He is still going to be coaching. Bit Double of a duty. shock. Yeah. Bit of a bit of a shock. That was uh I know uh Trevor Georgie's a big uh WWE guy, so that, that one was RKO at uh, RKO out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh I don't think anybody saw that coming considering the work that Stella has done to get St. John to where they are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, there was obviously a concern over the summer about, you know, Dylan Rossi going USHL, but you know, he was able to convince him to come to St. John and, you know, they signed William your red. They got uh crew scans and lockdown. You know, he, there's a potential for another one. A potential for another one. Moran. That uh, Zachary Moran that might be going to St. John. So it, it's it did come as a surprise based on him being able to recruit, you know, these potentially USHL, US college guys to to come to St. John. And I'm still maybe scratching my head as to what happened there. And I don't think we'll ever get a true story yeah. of, of what it is you know there's 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 always rumors here and there of, of what happened and uh anytime i've talked to anthony and and very very good guy and always he's always given us time you know anytime we've run into him he's been always you know uh, always willing to to come on the show if if we ever invited him to and mm -hmm. same thing with trevor georgie and you know it's we've kind of had that relationship with saint john and so for me to really say anything negative about it, I don't want to say the wrong thing and it gets us in bad with Trevor Georgie, yeah. but I also don't want to, you know, say anything nice about, uh, Saint John. <laughs> about St. John because it's, it's, it's a wildcast podcast, right? Yeah. It's kind of our, our thing, but I know we have listeners in St. John. So it's, and you know, with Rogers, we're, we're in St. John. So it's, it's a very, interesting timing yeah that's, um, that's what shocked me out of you know is. this was they're not cape breton bad no right um they this was after they i think they came back and beat bathurst the night before yeah um and uh, in my opinion they're kind of surpass i know it's early but surpassing expectations so far based on on the record so it's yeah like i said very uh, caught me off guard. Let's let's put it that way. Yeah, I think the timing caught me off guard. Usually, general manager hirings and firings you see kind of midway through the year when they're not living up to expectations, or at the end of the year when they haven't lived up to expectations. I think the other part of it is um, Travis Crickard being named the general manager, taking on that extra responsibility, and um, double duty is always tough. Yeah, double duty is always tough, especially when you're starting a rebuild. But he's going to be the guy leading these men and mm -hmm. I'm not saying that him and Stella didn't see eye to eye with players, mm -hmm. but I mean, maybe it is just a, a, a chance for Kirker to get in and get his guys recruit a little bit easier, a little, a little easier to recruit. Although I don't know how easy it is during the season when you're on the road trips and stuff like that. But I mean, yeah, St. John, not even 10 games into the season, yeah. um, making that move. It's a little interesting where maybe it's not made in training camp and maybe it wasn't, just based on him trying to get some of these guys from USHL to, to report. And then, um, but yeah, I mean, St. John's got the same amount of goals as Moncton has 21 goals for. So yeah. They, and they just, they just lost one after winning four straight, their streak was just snapped. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a little bit of an interesting situation um, there for sure. Team Canada announced it's uh, three coaches or not team Canada. The CHL prospects announced their coaches. It's the same Coaches that won gold at the 2024 Helenka Gretzky Cup, Chris Smallett uh, from Kelowna, uh, Gordy Dwyer from Bathurst, and Ryan Olan from North Bay. Now let's get to the big news. Um, came out in a tweet that the NCAA was going to vote for yes. CHL exemption this week. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't really understand a whole lot of this. This means... A player like Jacoby Weiner, for example, mm -hmm. if he wanted to stay and play here next season after camp, he could do that now and still go NCAA if they vote yes for that. Is that what this means? 
honestly, I'm still kind of at putting the numbers together and trying to understand what it is. Because to me, it seems like if they come here at 17, mm-hmm. and this, so if, if Weiner had been here and this was in place, he could play here when he was 17, 18. And if he didn't get drafted and didn't make a, you know, didn't have a spot as a 20 year old. Right. His NCAA options at the age of 20 would still be available to him. I don't think this is taking 17 and 18 year old kids from the league. Mm-hmm. I think this is the 19 year olds that don't make the AHL and, and that. I think that's where this may hurt the CHL, I believe. See, for me, I it's I haven't had really had a chance to read up on it, and I should have. But the way I understood it is that you could anybody could just randomly commit to an NCAA team. Mm-hmm. Like, can you imagine? I mean, we know it won't happen, but Caleb Dinway plays next week, and all of a sudden he decides to go play at Boston University. <laughs> you know, like that's that's how I understood the rule. It's probably not how it is, but um, the way you describe it sounds more like like how how it would be. Whereas yeah. you know, an American comes here, you know they they enjoy their they enjoy their time, and then all of a sudden it's numbers game. Uh, in the queue, and but they, then they can go play NCAA hockey. That sounds more like how it would go down. Uh, heaven forbid, please don't allow it to be the way I think it is. <laughs> yeah, please not. Um, <laughs> and I mean, you look at Egan Beveridge, I don't know if that's what the situation was in St. John because you know he was a mystery for you know the first three weeks of the season. Yeah, you know, he was a regular in their lineup uh last year and then only decided to report to St. John last weekend. Now, was he convinced to come to St. John and say, we want you here, we need you here? Or was he back home in New Hampshire kind of waiting for this rule to play out to see, you know, if maybe NCAA eligibility was still around for him? So it's, Mm -hmm. I don't, um, it's it's a game changer. Yeah. Uh, And I said this week, uh, Alan Walsh had a tweet, uh, expect an NCAA vote to grant Canadian major junior players eligibility within the next 30 days. Uh, the walls are fun. Walls are finally coming down. Huge implications for CHL, NCAA, and the NHL. Um, and then I clicked on the article. There wasn't much to it, um, but in it, it said um, a committee study. Uh, where was it here? It is not like it kind of goes through it, and then it says NCAA's rule taking away eligibility for those who play games in the Canadian Hockey League that violates the U.S. antitrust laws. It is not clear how quickly the legislation changing NCAA rules would take effect. So the other thing that I wonder is how does this hurt the CHL or not hurt the CHL in terms of the players that use the, I want to go NCAA. Yeah. Mm. So I don't have to report. Well, if there's not that threat of that now, can our teams just going to be like, yeah, I bet you do. We're still taking you and you still have your, NCAA eligibility later on. That's what I I think. Hopefully, again, we once this actually comes down, we'll maybe get someone on the show that. Well, how about this? It. How about this? Yeah. Let's say it is, it is the way that you say it is. Right. They make it a, a rule. Well, Cole Eisenman signs with Moncton after the role after the role juniors leaves after next after the season, and then goes plays you uh, NCAA next season. Would that not that would. That's how I would read the rule. Yeah. Yeah. If, if it's that way. And because for me, it, it feels like the kids that want to keep their NCAA, it's because they don't like they want an option after here. And I think this actually hurts the CIS more than it hurts the CHL. Yeah. Because if a kid can go down to like from, you know, Western Canada can go down to Oregon or, mm-hmm. you know, one of those, uh, Montana or those those hockey schools in the Midwest and stuff like that. That's not in the Midwest. I know that was wrong and I can't think of schools uh off the top of my head, but not very good at geography no, over here. No, I, it's kind of more below Alberta, Midwest. I'm thinking more like Michigan. Um yeah, I think this hurts the CIS more than it hurts the CHL, you know. That's it's it's a an interesting way to look at it, but now I mean if it is the way you describe. And it becomes a rule. Maybe we can look at the the Eisman thing. Yeah, I mean, why not? I know it's uh, look. You know, we've been <laughs> we've been praying for him for three years now, and never look, thought he wants to eat his shorts. Hey, what he said them. he would do if it happened. So they're they're tasty. <laughs> I had to spread some 
hot sauce on that. You know, I would think you'd need more Frank, than hot some, sauce. Some on, Frank's red hot on sauce that, on my undies. It's <laughs> it's basically an evolving situation. I don't think anybody really knows. I reached out to a couple people to ask if they would come on, and it was just like there's nothing really to talk about because nobody yeah, knows it's, the fine workings of it's how still it's, up in the air how it's going to work. So yeah. um, when we know. You'll know. Well, you'll know. I mean, we'll retweet it and talk yeah, about it, 100%. and then we'll bring it on the show. But all right, let's get to the um, Q and JHL team of the week. And finally, luckily, it's all names I can pronounce. Ah, uh, yeah. let's see if let's see how you do it. All right, Manuel Vermette from Shakutami, two goals, two games played, three goals, three assists. Matthew Kata four for Ramuski. Two goals, four assists in his return to uh, to Halifax. Mm-hmm. Maxime Massé from Shakutami. Two games played, four goals, one assist. Nate Tivy from St. John. Two goals, two assists in two games. Ty Higgins for Renaranda. Uh, he had uh, one goal, two assists, and two games played. And then Samuel Maloche in Renaranda. It was 2-0 with a 9-6-9. And a one goals against average. Not bad. Yeah, no, I was really, I was really happy. He did when, good when that came. You know, out. that uh, Emmanuel Ver, Ver, Verrett, Vermet, uh, You know, you might have. Uh, you know, I'll get. I'll give you uh, an eight point five out of ten on I'll that. I'll take one. that. And fun fact, let's see if I can improve it. The uh, the player of the week for the QMJHL was Emmanuel Vermet. Vermette? Is it Vermette? Vermette. Is it is Vermette? Vermette. Oh, Vermette. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, three goals, three assists, two games played, but. You know, you kind of think if the league wanted to stick it to Halifax, they could give they could have given Matthew Kata four. Yeah, that's player they of the week. Both had six points. That uh, player player of the week uh, would have been Cataford, but he <laughs> did he ever make an impression on those Halifax fans? Oh, did he ever? You know, geez, he was. Uh, you'd think the Halifax fans wanted him to just be grilled to the bench yeah. instead of instead of playing. You know, it's um, some interesting takes. Um, from some Halifax fans after yeah. that, um, after that game, um, they weren't happy with him. Complaining about him running at uh, at Schultz, going after Braden McPhee, yeah, uh, taunting the Mooseheads bench. Uh, and then what? All... What do you expect? I mean, it's um, he's now the opposition. Yeah. Did you think he was? He's got it. So apparently when you play three years of your career in Halifax, three or more, you are supposed to be gentle on them because they can be extremely sensitive when you make your return (laughs) to the Scotiabank Center. Yeah. With that being said, (laughs) November 3rd, I believe, is the first time that Dylan McKinnon and Marcus Vitacek will be returning to Halifax. Um, So a message to you, uh, gentlemen. Um, be careful. <laughs> Just be gentle on them on the moose heads. Yeah. Right? No they're hits. they're ex- they're extremely sensitive over there. No taunting. No taunting. Uh, remember your your role as the opposition in that game is to just sit on the bench. <laughs> you are not needed on the ice at all. Nope. So just enjoy your return. You'll get your video montage. After that, just. Sit on the bench, make sure the water bottles are filled, and that's all you got to do. Yeah. Wave to the crowd for your montage. Yep. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, Thank sit you. down. Yep. That's all you got to do. That's actually the uh, the first bus trip they're putting together, eh? Ah, November very good. 3rd. So, that's, very good. I kind of wish, like, we're playing Valdor the night before. So, I was like, oh, yeah. I didn't know. I was hoping to go down to Halifax, do the IKEA thing mm. with Prego, and, <laughs> and then stay the night go to the game, come home. And then I'm like, oh, bus trip. That's exciting. And then I'm like, oh, we play Valdor. So there's no possibility of going the night before. So that is the uh, that is the first time they're taking the bus this season. Allegedly, that's they're just don't quote us. That's what they're working on is for that first game in Halifax. Mm-hmm. Um, so we may have to go to that one and allegedly get Mr. Fittichek and Mr. McKinnon on the uh, post game. It was the first game back in Halifax. Well, that is the daughter's birthday weekend. So oh, I no. Don't know if I'll be able to make that trip. Does she want to spend it in Halifax at all? Uh, I think her. Oh. oh, let her know that this year she's spending it with Megan's dad in Halifax. Mm, I think she'd rather do Olympia cheer. 
you think, but you don't know. Yeah, I'll run. <laughs> I'll run a buyer. Just see if maybe she want to spend it with with grandpa. Well, we'll see. Right? We'll all run a buyer. Yeah. The party itself is on the Saturday, which is the second. So technically, I technically, could go. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll see. All right. You want to talk about this team? Yeah. Why not? All right. Weekly rewind. All right. Well, a much, much better effort. We asked what we were going to see out of the team, and you asked for a complete 180, and that's exactly what we got. Much better week. They go two and zero with wins over uh, Bathurst and Charlottetown, bringing the record to four one and one for nine points. Second in the Maritimes, third in the conference. Friday night in Bathurst again for the sixth time in a month. Um, it took them a bit to get going. Simon had to be sharp early as they were all over. Him. I think they were out shooting them like seven to one at one mm-hmm. point. Like they just couldn't get the puck. Very reminiscent of last year. Just could not get the puck out of the zone. Thankfully, it stayed out of our net. Um, but the dam broke. We got our first power play goal of the year. Oh. Um, and they came, they didn't look back and they ended up winning, uh, winning five to one. Uh, I'll be honest. I wasn't a big fan of the effort. Um, it wasn't, uh, I, I, yeah, it was a Steinman show. If it wasn't for him, it's a completely different story. Uh, I think we mentioned earlier, there were some penalties they took that, um, you know, I think they'd probably take back if they had the opportunity. Uh, just, uh, yeah, still wasn't, wasn't happy with how things went. Uh, with the players we have on this roster, one shot in the first 12 minutes, I think, yeah, is not acceptable. Uh, they have There's to get a more. noticeable difference when Denry is not on the ice. Yep. Oh, he's the glue. Yeah. That uh, keeps this team together. Yeah. When he's in the lineup, the team is much better. Uh, so fingers crossed, he's back on uh, Saturday. Saturday. I keep saying. Fr- I keep whatever, saying Friday as I well. I keep thinking it's Friday, and I don't know why. There's a Jordan Davis concert on at the Friday? Avenir on Friday night. That's yep. probably going. Uh. Friday night is also homecoming, the big high school football game between the Moncton High School Purple Knights and the Harrison Trimble Trojans. Oh, at the uh, Rocky Stone Field at uh, Centennial Park. That's exciting. Uh, so, if you are a former graduate of either of those two schools, or you enjoy high school football, <laughs> that's where you'll find me Friday night. Nice on the, the field. No, 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 no. Like playing? No, <laughs> I would have no legs. Did you play football? <laughs> I was a tight end. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wide receiver. Yeah. Hence <laughs> the hot shot. Yeah. Um, so that didn't ask the question. Are you going to Jordan Davis? No, I okay. don't think so. I don't No, I don't, I don't believe so. I think the football game might, uh, Drop that. I haven't been to homecoming in, in many, many, many years because there's always been a Wildcats game. That conflicted with the schedule. Right. There's always been a Wildcats game on the Friday night of homecoming. Home game. This is the first year, and I think six years, that there's not. Nice. So I'm going to check it out. I'm sure Moncton High will lose. <laughs> and there's some some listeners of this show who will appreciate when I just said that. Yeah. Um, but uh, if they can somehow pull out a win or a tie, it could really drastically change the playoff uh, implications Oh, okay. All right, all right. Uh, because right now Moncton High is kind of on the bubble where they're two and two, but McNaughton is also two and two, but Moncton High is more points scored. So they're in the playoffs uh, and Trimble's, I think fighting for first or second in the, in the league. So, you know, uh, a purple Knights upset <laughs> could very well uh, mess up the, the Trimble plans for uh, first place. All right, back to hockey. Yep. Uh, <laughs> That's the most you'll ever hear me talk about high school football. <laughs> yeah. Um, this team, like on the road, I, I don't know what it is. They just, they play much better on the road. I don't know if it's because they get on the bus and they're hanging out or staying in hotels and, um, you know, just kind of gelling as a group to 3 0 on the road this year. Um, but again, as much as we talked about discipline for our team, man. Bathurst took 11, sorry, seven penalties and went over. Yep. Charlottetown took 11 and went, I think they had one, right? No, they had zero. Yeah. No. So our penalty kills good. Yeah. Our power play isn't. Uh, and that's the problem. 
power play is the problem right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they there are some players I think we haven't seen their potential. Yeah. They're waiting. We thought we finally had a Picarchic goal on Sunday. Yeah. With that bloody video view. <laughs> Probably about that much offside. Yeah. Very close. Uh I think we both looked at each other when the puck went in the net. We said, There it is. He only said, yeah. to no avail. Yeah, it's uh Four one victory over the Islanders on uh, on Sunday. Um, I mean, they begin the five hand so five game homestand. I think that was probably the best they've looked. Um, yeah. In early in the season as a group, and that's a shortened roster going eleven seven. Loshi suspended, Denway out. They still gave up a shorty, but at least they got two power play goals. So mm-hmm. it's now three and two games. Um, and you kind of knew once they got one. I, I mean, I'm pretty glad I didn't have to bring my book out and kind of illustrate how to run a power play, but. Uh, three and two games. If they're going to give up a shorty and, and this one wasn't too bad. Like Moran played this. I've seen some, he played it pretty well. I've seen some issues with defensive ability and I don't think he could have played it any better. He took all the options away from Ross Campbell to the very end. Um, and he was just able to slide it. If there was another foot of ice, Vitacek, I think stops that pass. Cause he just missed it as it yep. went to Gorin, Um, so I, I think this was probably the best they've looked and to get Loshing and Denway back for Saturday's potentially Denway back for Saturday's game. Um, what's going to be interesting on the Saturday game is what the ice is going to be like after the concert and then the next day. Cause it's generally it's both teams, but that puck, I don't know. It just seems to hop around quite a bit. I mean, they're pretty good with getting it torn down. Yeah. Usually everything's out of there by, you know, two-ish in the morning. Uh, and they'll probably have a morning skate. And the morning skate, they'll, they'll see how things are and, yeah. and, and get a feel for the ice. And You know, we're facing the first overall team in the league on Saturday. I was going to bring that up, yeah. Five and one Sherbrooke. I, I had to double-check that. I looked over their roster today. I'm like... Sorry, what? I looked over their roster. <laughs> no, no, you're like, I'm sorry, what? Like, what is this? There's an end... No disrespect, but no names jump off the page. Yeah. Right. So they're, it's just, it's, they're getting contributions from all four lines. Uh, Hugo Marcel has almost a point per game, five points, and just well coached. Yeah. Uh, Jules Bouchard, it, it's, I was like, what? They're first in the league? I had no idea. Yeah, their power play is running at 28%. They're six for 18 or uh, penalty killings at an 85%. I mean, they've 4 0 at home. They're they're taking advantage of their home record. But yeah, like Beauregard, six points. Primo, six points. Marcel, six points. Lompron, five points. Gendron, five points. Yeah, they're getting there's, there's, there's it's, no, it's, no game breakers yeah, there. But yeah. I mean, they beat Baycomo, Shawinigan. Ren, Quebec, and Valdor, but Baycomo and Shawinigan, those are two pretty that's, good wins. Those are early slouch, that's a yeah. slouch game. It's and that's after trading St. Hilaire. Yeah. Like he would have he's the, he was their goaltender that yeah. allegedly wasn't coming back or hadn't there was no real reporting on it. But yeah, um, so that's uh I mean don't sleep on them. No. I think that's kind of the the game plan is you know, this team can every every line can can contribute. And everybody's contributing, you know, all lines are firing. Pucks in deep, bang. Pucks in deep. That's right. Uh didn't that caught me off guard. You know, when I when I saw who was who was uh on top of the league. So yeah, don't uh don't think this is gonna be uh, an easy one. No one no. No, no game is no easy. No games are easy. But... Um and it is country night, so Yeah. Yeah. Um nineties country, please. Like nothing against new country. 96.9, we love those guys, but nothing against the brand of new country. Um, but I would actually if you're going country's night, you gotta go Alan Jackson, Brooks and Dunn, Garth Brooks, Shine Twain, like the ones that walked so these kids could run now. <laughs> I mentioned this to you on on Sunday. We like Paul Thomas, but yeah. how great would it be if Scotty and Tony were the MCs or the PA or whatever you want for this country night? Yeah. Because we love Scotty and Tony. And you'll they're hear the, about them again later in the show. Yeah, they're the premier hosts. I mean, if they can host YQM, they can host 
four thousand people at country night. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, that's just another marketing tool that that you could use. Uh, early in the season, what kind of surprised you more about this team? The fact that they have no captain and all assistants, or Keegan Warren still hasn't started. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit of a double-ended question. Two it's, completely it's, different things. Um, I think they're waiting for someone to pop off as captain. Someone that's that's going to say, this is my team. Yeah, I want it. And it just seems right now they're, I mean, you can already tell the leadership on this group is much better than it was in previous years. Yeah. Um, that's... I mean, I'd rather have no captain than four captains like the University of Minnesota. <laughs> what? It just feels like whoever's got the highest grade point oh average that month gets to be the captain. What? Four captains? Uh, I don't care. I don't care about captains. Uh, honestly, if they go all assistants all year, I, I, I actually like that. Yeah. Uh, it's... There shouldn't need to be a C on your jersey to be a leader. Yeah, and that's I think it. I think that's what it is with Gardner and Taylor coming in. It's a clean slate, and I said this yes or Sunday on the live. I said they've rotated them. I don't think it's been the same for the whole or three or whatever the same game. They've kind of rotated through, and maybe they're waiting for the first month of the season to see if someone mm-hmm. steps up. I, I'm with you. I don't care if they don't have a C. We don't need one. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't mean you're. Being the captain doesn't mean, oh, you have to listen to me and do it my way. Yeah. They've got leaders on there. They've got enough guys that have been through, uh, I hate using this slogan, been through the wars mm-hmm. uh, of the queue, and they've got enough leaders, and I think that room is built on, that. you can see the leadership in that room already. I don't I don't care C-wise, but for me, it's like, why is Warren not starting? Well, you got to wonder. I mean, he went to camp with Boston didn't make it, you know, didn't pass a physical, yeah. got sent back to Moncton. Maybe he's just not 100%. Which is odd that he's backing up, though. Because if he gets pressed into it and he's not 100%. It's, it's, I mean, if he doesn't get one of these games this weekend, I'll start wondering what the hell is going on. Yeah. Which um, would probably be Charlottetown on Monday. I don't really care. No, I, I think if you're looking at it, yeah. I, I would probably get that one. Guess that one. It is certainly it. Because the last thing you want is to burn out Steinman. Yeah. And then you're... Don't, don't even ask. Um, yeah, he needs to He needs to get a start. Uh, every time I look at those lineups, you know, three or four hours before the game, and I'm not seeing his name <laughs> as a starting goalie. I'm like, yeah. what is going on here? Uh, so, yeah, it, it's I'm really hoping to see him either Saturday night or, or Monday afternoon. Yeah, because... It... These games, I don't want to say they don't matter, but I mean, they've had one set of back to backs and two and threes. They get a week off and then they got two and three and then they got two and then they go on the road trip where they get a week and then it's three and three. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you want to wait with Keegan Warren until the end of October to get start. And what worries me is if he's if he's 80 percent healthy, why is he backing up? And that's that's the worry to me, because if he's 80 percent healthy and. Something goes wrong with Steinman, and now he's pressed in, and something goes wrong with him. Is McKinnon strapping on the pads? Is the e Well, let, let like, me let me like. I mean, that's the we worry we to me. we saw the goaltending at training camp. Yeah, and I think as funny as this sounds, I would take an eighty percent Keegan Warren. Yeah, over what we saw in training camp. Yeah, yeah. I so would. that's where I'm at. Um. Yeah, I just need him to get, to get a start. Yeah, it just seems weird that he's been backing up every game, but hasn't ended up getting a start. Yeah. In in goal and and you know from last year in terms of we were fine either goalie no matter what they've already got a better defensive system coming, mm-hmm. and we still haven't seen the kid play and he seemed like seems to be healthy to me yeah, from the warmups and stuff like that i don't see any like jumping around doing the whole goalie thing yeah. and i don't see any like not going down and not pushing across yeah. cuz yeah. something is wrong or anything like it seems like it's an area that he could play i just i just it's a little odd that he hasn't got a single start in, yeah. in six games yeah so for me i uh i would like to see him 
I don't care if it's Saturday. I don't care if it's Monday. I just he just needs to get in there. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of uh, speaking of goalies, did you did you see our uh, Twitter messages last night by chance? No. <laughs> so, um, Stefan Larue shared the uh, the the OHL goalie fight. Oh yes. And uh, I was like, what the QMJHL took from us with no fights? And yes, oh uh, Antoine but, Samuel. Yeah. Yeah. And so Antoine Samuel reached out to us and he's like, fun fact, I was involved in the last goalie fight in the QMJHL against former Wildcat Francis LeClaire. Here's uh, here's some trivia for the week. And I was like, how did it go? And he sent me the YouTube. You can go find it. And uh, it could have gone better for him. It could have gone uh, could have gone better for him, to be honest with you. But uh, he was like, hey, forever in history. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to talk about that on the show. Yeah, and- you know what? I, I got the message. I saw it, but I was just getting ready for bed. And I was like, I'm not going to open it. Um, and I just totally forgot to to look at it. So that's kind of getting ready for bed. That was nine thirty last night, Bruh. <laughs> the Simpsons was from nine to nine thirty. <laughs> Come on, yeah. I also don't... Monday. Can we mention it? I mean, it's pretty. This like the Monday coming up. It's kind of known. I was gonna save it for the end, but After... I mean, we're talking about the game. But we're talking about the game, and we probably could. You can't use music. Because we're on but Rogers it's TV. Just the... Yeah, you can't use music because we're on Rogers TV. Is it the thing I've been sharing? Yeah. The ding, ding, ding. I know. I know. Sad face. I know. I know. Welcome to the Black Parade. Um, the black jerseys. They advertised it as we were leaving. Um, like we talked about, uh, talked about country night, but they're going with a black jersey, and we haven't seen them. Since. There are some rumors of what they could be. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't want to. We don't want to talk about that on what they look like. But from what we've been hearing, told, they look I, I, cool. it's, yeah, yeah, they look pretty cool. And I'm a pretty basic dude. Like I don't like over exuberant yeah. third jerseys. I do. He does. <laughs> He's the jersey guy. Yeah, I'm I not do. the jersey guy. I just like basic. You know, if you take. A few years ago at the Roar store, some of you may actually have this hat, but they had a hat and on the front, it just said Hub City and there were claws through, I think, the T and the Y of, yeah. of City. And I've, for the for years now, I've I've said to myself, that would be the sickest jersey and I never use the word sick because I don't like talking like the kids do these do, do, do You're these shizzy, bro. But just hub city across the chest with claws going through the T and the Y and then two cat logos on the shoulders in like a silver color would be the absolute best jersey I've ever seen the Wildcats put together. Now, that's not what they're doing. No. But the claw will be there. If you've seen their profile picture on Facebook. Stop. We're back, folks. <laughs> yeah. Technical stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Shocker. no, like, we're if if you've gone on the Wildcats Facebook page and you see their new profile picture, it's just red claws. So that's kind of like the front of the jersey look. Uh so I'm I'm excited for this. Yeah. I, I, I've been waiting for them to have something different. Like they've had Star Wars jerseys. They've had Remembrance Day jerseys, of course. They've had uh, Acadian jerseys. But that's I'm, what I'm here for. If you're going to do these <laughs> nights, St. Patrick's Day jerseys, lean into them. Like, again, you don't need 40 theme nights like yeah. we don't need a country jersey although lethbridge had one i think it was lethbridge had one of the best country nights mm. where the jersey and the whole uniform the pants were jeans and the jersey on the <laughs> no bottom that's like that's too much that's stuff that's but that's what much. i mean like they leaned into country night yeah. that was their jersey you don't need that all the time that's too much but that's... i've always said home road third pink or cancer jersey uh and remembrance day five that's it mm. and maybe a teddy bear toss but it doesn't have to be like Edmonton. Like Calgary just got a simple teddy bear yeah. toss jersey. And those are your six jerseys. That's and it. They've, and they've got to keep it. They can't Remember go too big with it because 
next season is 30 years. Yeah. So they're going to have a 30th anniversary jersey. So they don't want to go too too much on the black. Um, I think their 30th anniversary jerseys will be a lot sharper. Yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm excited to see them. I'm like I said, I'm a basic dude. I don't <laughs> I don't like you know random designs on dir- jerseys, uh, fictitious logos or anything like that. Basic. Give me you... a claw across the front with matching helmets. Do you want to magnifique? Do you want to see that hub jer- that hub city jersey come to life? Yes, on the Wildcats. I would love it. Well, hopefully, the CHL again does that design a jersey mm-hmm. and they bring it to the queue. Third year, I'm asking. I'm believing in it. Let's have it happen. But if it does, I'm going to design the day. Design I, it with Avery's name on it. I'm going to design a darn jersey with design my daughter's with, name on with, it. Yep. Yeah. And then that they'll bring it to life. Yeah, I just need the picture of the hat. I think <laughs> I have an idea of what the hat looks like. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah and I, I like black jerseys. I think they look sick. Like I, I hate the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and all their fans and all the green everywhere. But there's nothing nicer than a black jersey mm-hmm. with green on it, or like a nice black jersey with a nice red trim or something like yeah. that. Like. Moncton doesn't seem like they should have a black jersey, but they've had a couple good ones, mm-hmm. like the pink and the rink, the one black one that I wore a couple of years ago. Um, the 20th anniversary one, I think, was black in their memorial cup, memorial cup here. Um, but yeah, they're, they're getting new stuff in the Roar store every now and again. I hope that these jerseys, unlike the 30th anniversary, fans can buy them because I wouldn't mind owning one. Um, one other thing, Roar store, if you're listening. Kids love these things. These big chains with the logos, well, adults too. Kids love them. Bring them in. Go to a go to a Halifax game, and you see yeah. one almost every second kid. Yeah, like, that's called the license to print money, kids. That's called the license to print money. Speaking of Halifax, I did love the uh, the moose was weird. The big massive moose that they have in the building. Oh, like the moose devil. Yeah, the moose devil. Yeah, um, that's a bit weird, but the lights on the glass yeah sick yeah very sharp yeah so yeah there's a a reported black jersey we'll see some some stuff coming you've already seen it on the social medias with Mm -hmm. my welcome to the black parade if i'm making if if you're doing the black for the love of god lean into it do a whole new retro or a whole new black intro with like don't make it black jerseys and then boom color boom color boom black and white go with welcome to black parade when I was a young boy and then you, your video is your dad and your kid walk into the Coliseum and then walk into the Avenue center. You just listen to the lyrics. It's just, it writes itself. It's just that. Um, hey, black Betty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't like, don't I, go I, back I, 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 yeah. everybody goes back in black by ACDC. It's just yeah. easy. Go something. You're coming off 2000s night, which hat tip to them. Mm-hmm. Um, that was one of the. We were having a great sing along. Oh my goodness! Yeah, <laughs> the uh, the guy from Greenfield's like, you guys should have more BSB on your podcast. Done. Not uh, not a problem. But I said to uh, I said to Mallory, this is one of the first games I could sing all the songs that they're playing in the warm up. Like this is this yeah. is my jam, and I'm hoping yeah. Country Nights a little bit like that as well. And like yeah. those kind of theme nights, you don't need jerseys for all of them, but those kind of theme nights are cool. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, they have a '90s. 80s um and continue this little trend of different music yep. options because i think 2000 hit hit well for him i like it uh to do to do are you ready for everyone's favorite part of the show yes let's I'm finally waiting to talk about to this. that let's make sure i got the mute off there we go eric maria realtor buy a house from him stick tap of the week second one of the season yeah uh and it's the biggest. So yeah, we we hope it ends up leading to the biggest. Uh, yeah. So for the past um, couple of weeks, there's been a contest on New Country Nine Six Nine with our friends Scotty and Tony. <laughs> you have just like absolutely obliterated anyone that was ever on that contest. I couldn't figure out what the hell you were tweeting about. I'm like, what is he talking about? Because a, I don't get up that early, and b, I don't. No offense, listen to 96.9 on my way to work because I've got serious radio. Right. But I was just like, what is he talking about? Yeah. 
so there's this contest called One Swift Second, and you need to identify a Taylor Swift song in one second. And so every weekday since I think middle of September, usually I wake up at seven o'clock in the morning. I've been waking up at six <laughs> just so I can get my coffee in me and listen for the keyword at 610 to possibly say it, play at 620 and then again, play at 820. Uh, every day I know the song. I'm just, just text me. Like I, I, some of these people, I don't understand. It's one second. Doesn't seem like much, but when you know her music, it's like, Oh, that's such a song. Anyway. So, Monday morning, here's Megan and I just passed out. <laughs> and it's the one day that we forget to wake up and text Swift. Because I just forgot to set my alarm. Yeah. <laughs> Who's yeah. calling my wife at 6 10 in the morning? Not me. Scotty and Tony. Yeah. And I didn't know what was going on. I know Megan had been looking. She's she's like, I was talking about job interviews. I thought maybe she was getting a job interview call at six o'clock in the morning and there was a time miscommunication and she pops out of bed and she puts it on a speakerphone. All I hear is Tony's voice. I'm like, Oh shit, it's game time. Uh, <laughs> Wake you up like that. Eh? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I, I'm ready. I'm like, I'm zoned in. It's on speakerphone. And they play the, they, they play the clue. And I'm like, it's Tim McGraw. It's Tim McGraw. And Megan's like, it's tear. I'm like, Megan, for God's sake, it's Tim McGraw. It's like that scene from Dumb and Dumber when he's like, for God's sake, just give me the damn number. <laughs> I'm telling her to say Tim McGraw. She's like, oh, Tim McGraw? <laughs> yeah, and you can hear Scott. He's like, hey, he let her go. And I thought it was, I you you sent me the, the clip. Yeah. And so you sent me the clip, and it was just a black screen, and I pressed it, and nothing was happening because I'm waiting for this video, and I'm yeah. like, there's nothing happening. Oh, well, let me turn the volume up. And then that's when I heard it. And I thought it was teardrops on my guitar as yeah. well. And I don't know Taylor Swift songs, but I'm like, I think that's teardrops on my guitar. Yeah. And I was just, I'm like, I know this. I knew right off the I knew right off the bat. And, and anyway, so uh, finally we had our opportunity. We're in the draw. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed that they're calling us next Tuesday to tell us where the winners. Uh, because, yeah, I wouldn't mind a trip to Toronto to see uh, T Swizzle and uh, with everything paid for. And you're going to take Avery? No. <laughs> yes, of course I'm taking Avery. What are you talking about? Is it the uh is it at least a hotel in Rogers? I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, uh that I don't would be kind of cool. Yeah, I know flights are included, hotels included, tickets are included, uh, and it's just spending money that you need to figure out yourself, but I right. can I can do that. And yeah, so that that's basically been my weekday at six o'clock every 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 morning mm. since September eighteenth is you know, Jeez. making sure I'm awake at 6.10 or 6.05 to text the keyword. And the one morning that I forget to <laughs> the text, well, they're calling me. So it's uh, it's a good thing that uh, someone in our household keeps their phone on ringer. Yeah. And uh, what was up? How many people have answered correctly? So your six half of the week goes to. Yeah. So six half of the week goes for Scotty and Tony for finally calling us. Um, I think I'm not sure what the odds are. Yeah. One in 30, one in 50. I'm not sure. I just wonder how many people have actually answered correctly. Yeah. So I think my calculation, I think there's about 20 to 25 correct entries. Yeah. But I also don't think it's only New Country 969. I think there's the Fredericton radio station uh, and the yeah. one in Sydney doing it as well. Yeah. So I figure it's like one in 50 ish chance because yeah. I don't think they have. I don't think each radio station is giving away a trip. Oh, okay. Um, so more or less competing with Fredericton and Sydney, but you know, I I'm think, hoping for you. I think I'm I'm I warrant this this award. This could be a heck of a weekend for Scotty and Tony. A, they get to host Country Week on Saturday. Yeah. And B, they get to call you on Tuesday, and uh, lose. Hear me lose my <laughs> freaking mind. The Stick Tap of the Week, sponsored by Eric Murray Real Estate with the Remax Avante team. If you're looking to buy or sell a home in the greater Moncton or surrounding area, make sure to check him out on social media or give him a call at 506-863-8802.
All right, and that brings us to the Wildcats Wildcat of the Week presented by Rosemary Lynn Massage and Spa. Right now, they've got the uh, 40% off all spa services is extended to the month of October. And don't forget, they have the loyalty card by nine spa services and get one free. Call them at 506-830-1224 or stop over at 1224 Mountain Road. No Denway, eh? No lotion. No problem. Um, this guy was up to the task. He scored our first power play goal of the year. Um, and it three. was going four feet wide. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, ended the, uh, end of the weekend, three goals in the two games. Um, I mean, this is just why you acquire these type of players depth wise. When you're two, two of your top stars are out, this guy stepped up. Um, the Wildcats Wildcat of the week is number six, Marcus Vitacek. Um, yeah, that's check. VD check. That is the uh, that is it, man. That is the show. We have a couple theme nights coming up this week, as we kind of mentioned earlier. The five and one Sherbrooke Phoenix come in on Saturday for country night. So grab your not boots. Friday, not Friday, Saturday. Grab your boots, belt buckle, and cowboy hat. Grab your posse and come on down to the Avenir Corral. Yeehaw! <laughs> to see this one and uh, Thanksgiving Monday as well. Um, it's been teased where black we are, which means one thing, and I think we already discussed it. And I am so pumped to see these things yep nothing will excite me more this week than black jerseys yep and then nothing will excite you more next week than than a call from scotty and Tony. <laughs> exactly all right and hopefully uh we should be back on the go home show with brock because he was on holiday so that's why we missed it last wednesday but uh yeah we'll be on there this wednesday with him and uh for jeremy i'm adam see you next week Thanks for listening to another episode of the Wildcast Podcast. Follow us on social media at Moncton Wildcast.